virtual partners. Once again, I am so glad that you are here for another transformational Bible study. Today we're going to continue in our new series in April entitled Embracing Your Future, Part 2. In this session, I want to explore Define the Oz. I think it ties in very well with our series that I'm teaching on Sunday as we are looking at the problems of destiny. Embracing our future requires us to first face our future. And when the future we face presents us with experiences that have absolutely uh, extraordinary odds against us or extremely low probability odds of success, it is then that we call on God and then God will call on us to trust him to defy the odds. This is what Moses experienced in the deliverance of Israel. What God would do through Moses had never been done. And likewise, my dear friend, God will bring you through some experiences you've never been through before, and he will do it successfully. I need you to embrace that. God will not allow you to go through something that he don't intend for you to go through and get through. Let's take a look at two profound scriptures to set the narrative for our lesson tonight. One of them is going to be about Moses, and although I'm not going to delve deeply into the Moses experience, I do want to just deal with this particular scripture to set the tone. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 through 14, states that Moses answered the people after explaining to them his experience with God and his reason for doing what he is doing to bring the deliverance to the children of Israel. Moses answered that the people saying, do not be afraid. He says, stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today will never, you will never, you will never see them again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Now, Daniel comes back in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32b. He says, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. To defy the odds, Moses needed to be still and to be strong and then allow God through him to carry out great exploits. My dear friend tonight, that's the posture that we all should take. Now, in verse 14, God declared this. He said, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Again, I want to place an emphasis on being still as you embrace your future, as you defy the odds. Now, please hear me. When I say being still, being still does not mean removing yourself from the fight. Nor does it mean avoiding the responsibility of your calling or the responsibility of your purpose in life. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that you're, going, you're not going to engage. It means that you're not going to depend on yourself. Now, Psalms chapter 46, verse 10, God reminds us to be still and know that I am God. Now, take a moment and meditate on this verse because it is important in defying the odds be still. This phrase is actually derived from the Hebrew word rafa, which means to let go, to release. Essentially, it means to surrender. Now, that's a tough word for many of us, to surrender. Or in our modern terms, uh, get out of your will and get into God's will. In essence, let go of and release your desire to control the narrative of your crisis. See, many a times we are trying to get ahead of God in controlling things. Well, let me tell you something. We need to give ourselves permission to let that kind of thought, that thought pattern go. We got to let it go. We got to give ourselves permission to give God permission to move inside of our life. We have to give ourselves permission to just be still and let God be God. Now, throughout history, God's people have faced seemingly insurmountable odds. Well, listen, here are a few of them. Moses versus Pharaoh and the Egyptian army. Then there was David versus Goliath. And then the disciples starting a new kingdom movement. Listen, that's what we were celebrating this past Holy Week. Because Christ, with everything he did on Calvary's cross, 
when he rose again from the dead, he was releasing his disciple, disciples to start or to continue, I would say, this new kingdom movement in the earth. Listen, all of the historical figures that I've just spoken of, they all conquered, they all overcame, and they all succeeded because they learned the value of surrendering to God's will and his way. Define the odds. This requires a discipline that I shared with you in my Easter Sunday's message, which is this. Now listen now, you've got to open your mind to God. In essence, not giving in to your emotions. You've got to open your mind up to God during challenging experiences. This discipline is essential to understanding and embracing another side of God and another level of his power. Listen, God is not going to show you the miraculous unless you're willing to submit yourself, unless you're willing to give yourself over to what God is doing and allow your mind to rest for a moment because what God is about to do is going to transcend anything you can think. He's going to transcend anything that you can even process in your mind. So God expects us to be still. Relax your mind. I want you to type that in. Relax your mind and let God do his work inside of your life. Now listen, God's preordained prophecies are unfolding in our lives in, and in this world every day, every month, every year. But listen to me. I said it to you on Sunday. Don't miss it because you can't, listen, don't miss it because you can't make sense out of what God is doing. The reason why many of us fail to defy the odds because we are always trying to make sense out of the confusion and the crisis that we're dealing with. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever found yourself in an overwhelming, no way out predicament? I want you to think about that for a moment. Don't answer so quickly. Some of you can because you can really just spit it out right now because it was just that fresh inside of your memory or it made such an impact in your life. Listen, we have a lot of words and phrases in the English language to describe being in a predicament or a difficult place. We hear phrases like you painted yourself into a corner or having your back up against the wall. In essence, you're in a predicament. A predicament is a difficult, unpleasant, and sometimes embarrassing situation. I know at some point in our lives we've all been there. Moses and the people of Israel found themselves in such a predicament. They found themselves trapped between Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea. Now, what I want you to see today in this lesson is that, is that just like Moses, coming to the Red Sea was just as much a part of God's plan as crossing it. Let me say that again. What I want you to see in today's lesson is that, like Moses, coming to the Red Sea was just as much a part of God's plan as crossing the Red Sea. So don't get disturbed when the odds are against you. I'm going to say it again. Don't get disturbed when the odds are against you. Because like Moses, I'm going to say this again. Like Moses, coming to your Red Sea is just as much a part of God's plan as crossing it. The odds will always be there in our life. But we have to believe that God is on our side. Notice our first power thought. It says, a predicament in God's hands is only a highway to God's promises. Gateway Church and to all of those that are listening to me tonight, whether you're a member or whether you're a parishioner or whether you're just partnering with us, God has a plan for you and I to defy the odds of life. What God is doing for you it, listen, what God and when God is ready to do some things for you, it doesn't matter that the odds are stacked against you. It doesn't matter. We serve, hear this tonight, we serve an odds defying God. Why don't you type that in tonight? We serve an odds defying God. That's a good place right there for an amen. You can go ahead and just type one in right there. Type an amen in. If you can't type it, just say it in the atmosphere. Amen. We serve an odds-defying God. I want the devil to hear it. 
Because when he starts to stack the deck against us in life, he needs to know that our faith, our hope is built on Jesus Christ, his blood and his righteousness. He is the son of God. He is God with us. Listen now, God champions us. He champions the underdog. Many times we see ourselves as the underdog because our problems seem so overwhelming as if we can't bear them. This is a continuing theme throughout the scriptures. God's presence ensured the victory of the nation of Israel when the odds were stacked against them and when David defeated Goliath. Israel triumphed over the Midianites when Gideon's army was reduced to a practically minuscule size. They won a decisive victory despite a vast numerical disadvantage of Israel's 300 soldiers to the Midianites' 135,000 soldiers. It is a great reminder to us today as well. If God is on your side, you will be victorious even when the odds are stacked against you. I like what King Saul's son, Jonathan, said to one young man that he allowed to wear his armor. Now, this was before David's time. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 6b, he said this, Perhaps the Lord will help us, for nothing can hinder the Lord. He can win a battle whether he has many warriors or only a few. Now, let me tell you, boy, that, if, that's not a, if that's not victory talk, I don't know what victory talk is. That's victory talk there. It doesn't matter how much or how many come against you, and it doesn't, doesn't matter how small you may seem in the midst of all of what you're dealing with. God doesn't, listen, he doesn't look at our situation the way we look at it. He look at it as, if there's a battle, I'm going to win. Now, listen, if he is fighting for you, you can have that same Faith talk on your tongue. If, no matter how big the battle is, as long as God is with me, God is going to win. And if God is in me, that means I am going to win. It is not with the intelligence we have. It is not with the resources that's available to us. It is not through our own power or strength that determines our victory when odds are stacked against us. It is all dependent upon God. Now, I want to share with you seven things to remember when the odds are stacked against you. I'm going to go through them a little quicker, but I want you to hear me. And if you have to replay this video, I want you to replay this session and look at them again. Very simply, number one, be confident in the Lord. Lord. That's what Paul writes in Hebrews 13 and 6. He says, so we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Here's the second thing to remember. God is holding your hand. Isaiah writes it. He says in Isaiah 41 and 13, For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. And here's number three. The third thing you should remember. Call on the Lord. Lamentations 3, chapter 3, verse 55 through 57 says, I call on your name, O Lord, from the depths of the pit. You heard my plea. Do not close your ear to my cry for help. You came near when I called on you, and you said, do not fear. Here's the fourth thing to remember. God will not leave you. Deuteronomy 31 says this in verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Here's the fifth thing to remember. You are not a slave of fear. That's what Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 15. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Here's the sixth thing you should remember. You've been redeemed. Look at what Isaiah says, chapter 43, verse 1. But now thus saith the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you, by name, you are 
mind. Oh my God, my God, that still echoes today. Don't you know that God knows your name and when he calls upon you, when he begins to impress upon your heart to do or to see or to open your eyes to certain things, he's calling your name specifically in the heavens because you are his, because you've been redeemed. Here's the seventh and final thing to remember. You are not alone. That's what he told Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you. Watch this. Wherever you go, wherever the odds are stacked against you, I'm going to be right there with you. People of God, God is your champion. You are his. Oh my God, listen, don't fear. Don't worry. Don't lose sleep. Rest in the knowledge and the peace that, that your God, the one who loves you, the one who fights for you, he says, you can defy the odds. Now, these seven things I just mentioned are God's declaration to you today to ensure your victories in life. You need to repeat them inside of your head. If necessary, you need to write them down in a diary, these seven things we just went over, so that when you are in this place where you're just feeling like you're down and out, as if the world is just going to overcome you and the crisis that you're in is going to overtake you, begin to read those things, those seven items to remember. They are God's declaration to you. Now, the Word of God provides us with light to see our victory and successes, which God sees despite our circumstances. See, God doesn't look at our circumstances and respond to our circumstances the way we do. Therefore, we need to get out of ourselves, as I said earlier, and get into the mind of God so we can see things as He sees them. So when God looks at our circumstances or look at our trials, he only see victory. He only see success. Now, there are numerous examples in scripture of the table turning power of God. I'm going to say it again, the table turning power of God. When we read and hear the word of God, the stories of victory against the odds, replacing the darkness of past failures and, and defeat, we see the table-turning power of God. And with the light of victory opening our eyes, we are able to see ourselves as God sees us. How does he see us? He sees us victorious. He sees us successful. Here is how God sees you. He sees you as an overcomer. An individual that is defying the odds, come what may. Now, I want to give you three faith actions to turn the odds in your favor. Number one, raise your value to match God's value of you. Now, I shared this faith action with you many times before, so I won't go too deeply into it. But I will say this that we must raise our self-valuation to match God's valuation of us. You see, oftentimes, through the course of unfortunate events in our lives, we lose our sense of self-worth. But through Jesus Christ, the image of God is imprinted in us. Now, the enemy's ploy is to wear you down and to devalue you so you will get this so that you will give up and watch this bail out he wants you to give up on life he wants you to bail out on the path that god has for you now if you buy into his plot over time just by living and making mistakes and bumping into the wrong people god's imprinted image is worn down and you feel more like an excuse for living than having a reason for living. Have you ever felt like that? That life has beaten you up so badly that you feel more like an excuse for living than having a reason or a purpose for living. I know I have been there. So listen, here's what I want you to do. You, you've gotten the word tonight. 
turn the table on the enemy who is wearing out God's image in you and trying to devalue you. You, when you do this, you will be victorious against the enemy of your destiny, the enemy of your soul, by allowing God to resurrect his image imprinted inside of you. Oh my God. Don't you know that when you gave your life to the Lord, when you accepted the finished work of Christ on Calvary, that God, through his Holy Spirit, sealed you until the day of redemption. In essence, your, his, his wonderful divine image is imprinted inside of you. And the only thing that can make you forget about that image is you when you allow Satan to deceive you. Here's the second faith action I want you to remember that will turn the odds in your favor. Number two, raise the tide of your spirit. Like the water level of the ocean, your spirit can be low or it can be high. When all the odds are stacked against you, to keep the level of your spirits high and to prevent your spirit from dying or drying up, you've got to guard your spirit. Listen to what Solomon writes in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. He says, the human spirit of a man can endure in sickness, but a crushed spirit. Who can bear it? Listen tonight. I need you to embrace this. I need you to hear me. If your spirit is strong and whole and you've managed it, you have guarded it, you can endure the adversities that are set against you by Satan. That's the reason why the Bible says no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. When your spirit has been sealed, when your spirit is dependent upon God's Holy Spirit and you allow the Holy Spirit to rise up inside of you and your confidence level is elevated and your faith level is elevated and you see with the eyes of God, nothing can, listen, nothing the adversary bring against you will prosper. Nothing. I want you to type that in. Nothing can prosper against you. But if you allow your spirit to be crushed, you will fall a victim to the adversaries that the enemy will bring upon you or the adversities that he will allow inside of your life by his lies and by his deceptions. Which brings us to the third and final faith action tonight. And that is raise your sights. Often we set our sights or our eyes on what is wrong rather than on what is right. Paul advises us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, to do this. He says, so we fix our eyes on not what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Paul says, don't fix your eyes on what is seen, because what you see will deceive you. God is saying to keep looking at or recognizing what is eternal. What is the most precious thing you could ever have in life? That is what your eyes should constantly be fixed on. That is what will strengthen and straighten out your course in life every time. Keeping your eyes fixed on what's important. Keeping your eyes fixed on what is precious. And so what is that? Well, let me continue because we're going to get to that in a moment. But I want to give you my, my final power thought. It says this. If you always look at how bad things are, that is what you're going to see and attract in your life. If you always look at the odds or how terrible life is to you, you are always going to find many confirmations of that along the way. Listen, if you look for bad things, you're going to find some things to confirm it. <laughs> if you're looking for all types of, of, of issues to come your way where there are none, you're going to confirm it and attract them into your life. Now, I mentioned a portion of our final scripture text in part on Sunday. Paul uses Jesus' focus as an example to us. He said this, and Paul records in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, fixing our eyes on Jesus, 
the pioneer or author and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. My dear friend, tonight, in my conclusion, you become like what you fix or focus your eyes upon. So be careful what you're fixated on. That is why Paul challenges us to fix our eyes on Jesus. Why? Because he's the one that has died for us. He's the one that brought life and abundant life. Paul challenges us to fix our eyes on Jesus and to fix our eyes on who we are in him. To fix our eyes on what we are capable of through him. Now, when we do, he will begin to restore and to reshape his image inside of us. Setting us up and empowering us to defy the odds in life. When you face the floods of life, my dear friend, and when they threaten to overwhelm you, remember, God is still sovereign. And his plan for your life remains intact. Satan can't change God's mind concerning you because what is for you is for you. Against all odds, if you stay faithful, if you embrace God, if you stay focused on Jesus Christ and his righteousness and the things of the heavenlies, I promise you, you will defy all of the odds. And God's purposes and plan and destiny for your life will remain intact. Well, this concludes our study for tonight. And I pray that you've been informed, that you've been inspired and transformed to become everything that God has declared you to become. Wow. Listen, because I am your pastor teaching, my assignment is very solid. I want you to take this as counsel. I want you to take this as my word for you to consider throughout this week because my job as a pastor teacher is for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for edifying of the body of Christ until we all come into the unity of the faith I want to pray for you tonight that God will touch you richly I want to pray that the words that have been spoken tonight is, is sealed inside of your heart burn inside of your mind that God can elevate your faith and take you to another level. That you'll have something to fight with this week. Let's pray. God, our dear Father, right now, I thank you for this amazing day. A day that we've never seen before and a day that we shall never see again. Thank you, dear God, for not leaving us defenseless. For you have given us everything we need for life and for godliness. You are a generous caring father who desires to protect us thank you god and to equip us thank you god with exactly what we need we need your image god we need your power tonight god through your son jesus christ and by his holy spirit to conquer to defy the odds Thank you for being our mighty warrior and a strong protector. We can depend upon you. Oh God, thank you so much we can depend upon you. You've, you've called us to stand firm, not in our own strength and in our own might, but in yours. Your power has no end and your authority demands even the demons to obey your will. So Father, we depend upon your, your, your power. We depend upon your word to conquer when Satan's strategies come against us. Help us, O oh God, to rely upon your matchless power to stand firm and defy all of the odds in life and come out on the other end of all of our challenges successful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. I hope that you have an absolutely incredible week. But with the word that is coming forth tonight, you can have an incredible week. Walk in faith. Walk in faith actions. Do those things that I ask you to do, those seven things to remember as you begin to defy the odds that come against you in life this week. Write them down, memorize them, meditate on them, and I guarantee you God is going to do a great thing in your life. 
Well, as always, you are the most awesome people in all of the world. Lady Catherine and I, we love you dearly, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, we're going to continue to pray for you, and we pray that you continue to pray for us. Until next time, have an absolutely incredible week, and we'll see you here, same time, same place, next week. Take care.